In this presentation, we will be taking a look at solving for total current and voltage drops on the individual components in a series RL circuit. In the last presentation, we solved for impedance in the circuit, which is the total opposition of current flow. And with the impedance and the total voltage, we can use those two values and Ohm's law and solve for total current. So we're going to be taking a look at figuring out total current. And total current in this specific circuit, I total, is going to be equal to E total divided by Z, which is your total opposition of current flow. So 120 volts for the source divided by 55.7 ohms of impedance will give us an approximate current flow of 2.15. Now I say approximate because there are more points beyond that on the decimal point that carry out, but that will become important a little bit later. So the 2.15 amps of current flow is what we will use now. Just like a DC circuit that is a series circuit, current flow is the same at all points. So we have 2.15 amps of current flow through the resistor and 2.15 amps of current flow through the inductor. So that solves for the total current. And what we have uh, left to do is the voltage drop. The voltage drops on the individual components is just applying Ohm's law at two different places. So we need to solve for E at the resistor or the voltage drop on the resistor and E at the inductor. So the voltage drop on the resistor, we'll call that ER, is going to be I times R, the value of the resistor, or 2.15 amps of current flow times 48 ohms of resistance. That is going to give us a voltage drop on the resistor of 103.2 volts. We can repeat the steps for the inductor. We'll call that EL, so the voltage drop on the inductor is going to be I times X of L, 2.15 amps of current flow times 28.26 ohms of inductive reactance. The voltage drop on the inductor is going to be 60.759 volts. Once again, this value is a little bit of an approximate, just like the uh, voltage drop on the resistor. And that's all based upon how far we have carried out beyond the decimal point for the current flow. Okay, if you look at the two values and you were to just simply add them together like what was done in a DC circuit, the 103.2 volts of resistive voltage plus the 60.759 volts of reactive voltage would be well above the source voltage of 120 volts. But because they are not in the same plane again, the inductive voltage is 90 degrees out of phase from the resistive voltage, we're still going to have to use Pythagorean's theorem to solve, or in this case, prove that our numbers are correct. So just like solving for resistance, this is going to be the resistive side of the triangle. So our resistive voltage drop is 103.2 volts. And then the reactive side, we have EL at 60.759 volts. And we can use Pythagorean's theorem. So E total, even though we have E total, we're just proving it. It's going to be equal to the square root of ER squared plus EL squared. Put the values in, 103.2 volts of resistive voltage squared plus 
60.759 volts of reactive voltage volts squared will give us a calculated voltage of 119.75. Now, I referred earlier to how far you take the values out beyond the decimal point. If you were to fall back to do your calculations, your current flow goes out five or six points beyond that. And so does your, that would change your resistive voltage drop and your reactive voltage drop which might get us a little bit closer, but the total in this case of 119.75 proves that our calculations are relatively correct because 120 volts was given at the source. And this would be a voltage triangle that we just built.